The title is Computation of Hydraulic Jump Secant Depth in a Sloped Circular Water Pipe. So I'll talk about why we're doing this, and I'll talk about um, the math behind it. I won't get too much into math, although I have a lot of slides of the math, because Debbie spent a lot of time on this, and, and we need to uh, show that the math is like the key to this thing. And then I'm going to talk about the results and how you can apply um, our work to uh, your work. So uh, we're working with a, a co-presenter, um, Steve McKenzie, who's the third author on this. He's in New Zealand, and this was a project uh, where, the, where he had a very a long pipeline, like miles long. And, uh, and originally it looked like it was going to be at different slopes, like steep to mild, steep to mild. And there might be hydraulic jumps at the transitions between the, the steep and mild portions. And so we started doing a whole lot. We couldn't find any, any work that had been done. We did a literature search of the hydraulic jump secant depth in a sloped circular pipe. There's plenty of research for a horizontal situation, but not for a sloped circular. So if anybody here knows about this solution, uh, let me know. Then you no, know, we didn't need to do this. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm kind of curious. So at any rate, what happened with the project was it turned out that all the pipes were, were going to be, the topography was a little different than initially we thought, and so all the slopes were sloped. At a were steep slope, and so there were going to be no hydraulic jumps. But uh, since we didn't know that initially, we did a whole lot of math. Debbie did a whole lot of math. We talked about math in the previous presentation about how we couldn't find some of the math that, was, that had gone on previously. And um, but uh, so we did a lot of math and uh, came up with essentially the presentation today. Instead of just keeping it in house and not having this public information, we decided let's go ahead and make it public. So. Um, what, just kind of to review what a hydraulic jump is, they're often purposely designed into processes such as water treatment plants to enable mixing. Um, in a circular pipe, if, if you have a jump where, uh, where the water, the secant depth that is the downstream depth of the jump reaches the crown of the pipe, then you can have a pressurized situation for that location in the pipe. And uh, hydraulic jumps occur where you have the transition between supercritical flow and subcritical a fruit number greater than one transitioning to a fruit number less than one. So just to kind of review maybe hydraulics, maybe back in your uh, junior level hydraulics course, uh, however many years ago that was, maybe it was just recently. Um, anyhow, this is a flume at Ohio University's hydraulics lab. It's a rectangular, uh, has rectangular walls. Um, and so this is, this is set up rectangular just to give you an idea of a uh, of, uh, hydraulic jump. This is a a uh, sluice gate here, so water goes shooting under the sluice gate, fruit number greater than one, very shallow, very high velocity flow, and there's a weir at the other end causing the water to back up, and so we have subcritical flow here. And so we have a, have a hydraulic jump between the supercritical transition from the supercritical to the subcritical, and lots of mixing as you can see in there. So then uh, here's a schematic diagram, the length of the jump, uh, Y1 is your upstream depth, Y2 is the downstream depth, and the steady state flow Q. So uh, Debbie and I run our business just out of our home, and so uh, we kind of are, uh, don't really have access too much to cool laboratory equipment. Um, so, uh, but maybe we didn't really need to have, have too much just to get a feel for what's going on here. So uh, just in our driveway, we set up a, a three inch clear pipe going to a, through some valves here to a cooler that had a, a submersible pump in it and, some, and pumped the water back through a clear tube through a valve and then to the inlet. And then we created a jump right here based on the valve setting, which essentially the valve's coming up from the bottom and creating a weir. And so you can see a blow up of that right here, where we have the supercritical transitioning to the subcritical. And here the water depth is not quite at the, uh, it's about half full, so we're not near the crown of the pipe. But if we do change the flow conditions, maybe increase the, the valve here so we have more of a weir there, or increase the flow, or there's a lot of ways you can do it, you can, uh, you can make the, the water depth reach the crown of the pipe. That is in our in our initial work with uh, Steve in New Zealand. We were trying to avoid a situation where we reach the front of the pipe. So, what's been analyzed uh, prior? Well, a lot of work's been done on hydraulic jumps in horizontal channels, um, rectangular, trapezoidal, circular, arch, horseshoe, inverted egg, normal egg, lots of geometries. In slope channels. From what we're aware of, not so much, mainly rectangular and trapezoidal. So just what does analyze mean? Analyze means come up with the Y2, <laughs> that secant depth, knowing like the flow rate, the diameter, 
and the upstream depth and the slope. And so what's new in this presentation is coming up with that Y2. So and just as a video example, uh, let's see if I can run this video here. I can be able to click on that. Um, don't want to take too much time, Mark. Is there, Brian, is there a way to get this video to go? <laughs> Never know. So uh, the little uh, arrow button should pop up at the bottom left here. All right, so there we go. Do we have sound on this thing? Hey, yeah, sound is going to be helpful later on. Um, okay, so at any rate, we'll just let this thing play play through twice. So uh, there's the hydraulic jump, and here you can just see the water circulating. You know, pretty simple setup: submersible pump, and the water comes back through and repeats. And uh, just run that one more time. And it here runs it. So. Uh, So you can see the hydraulic jump right there, then I zoom in on it, and uh, and it's not at the crown of the pipe, so this one's not quite full. All right, that's good. So uh, let's go to the next slide. So why do we care? So what our clients are, when we were working with Steve, who's in New Zealand, what his client, when we worked with Steve, what the client wanted was to avoid this slugging phenomenon where you have maybe um, the the secant depth reaching the crown of the pipe and then maybe backing off, maybe the flow rate's changing over, over time, so you sort of have this intermittent flow. They wanted to avoid um, what he calls slugging phenomenon. Water hammer, they termed it water hammer. I, I usually think of water hammer like in a pressurized pipe. But, uh, but at any rate, if you, if you have a, several pipes, if you have steep followed by mild, steep, mild, steep, mild, you might have a whole bunch of hydraulic jumps in your um, in your in the pipe, and so you could have different pressures build up between the different hydraulic jumps, and so maybe that if you don't have atmospheric pressure, that would affect your calculation for your if you use like uh, some sort of backwater or, or uh, some uh, calculation to compute the water depths using say Manning equation or something like that backwater. So um, they really wanted to avoid a pressurized situation. So we. Uh, so uh, just so looking at the uh, zooming in on the uh, on the video, taking this and then looking at it as a schematic drawing, going from location one to two, where we have supercritical going to subcritical flow, and then let's put some water depths on here. Label this Y1, Y2, the inside diameter and steady state flow rate, and then the slope of the pipe B. So then uh, just reviewing some uh, cross-sectional relationships from uh, pipe geometry. Um, area 1, area 2, uh, once you know your Y1 and your diameter, you can get the area, the, the, the top width, and so on with your Y2. Um, and then also we can define the central angle theta. And something that's important and very challenging for a slope pipe is to come up with the, uh, the location of the centroid um, for the area of flow. So then if we have water going down the pipe here, we can uh, do a momentum analysis, uh, maybe back from your junior fluid mechanics class, take a chunk of water out from here to here, and uh, analyze the control volume, and then do a momentum analysis of that. So what you have when you have momentum analysis, uh, the weight of the water, that is the weight of, weight of the water in the control volume, momentum coming in, momentum going out, hydrostatic force on the upstream face, hydrostatic force on the downstream face, uh, the, the uh, normal force of the of the uh, pipe wall on the water and a friction force of the, uh, of the, as the water flows down and contacts the pipe during, as it flows. And we have a length of the jump. I'm just gonna grab a drink of water here. So then as we continue with our control volume analysis, uh, set up directions of U and Z, horizontal and vertical, and then in the direction of flow X and perpendicular to the direction of flow Y. And so we're looking at moment, momentum in the direction of flow, so that's X. So we need the X components of all of these forces. And so we need the component of the weight force in the X direction and, uh, and uh, any other components like this H1, for instance, um, we need 
that's to the centroid, and so we'll need that. It's actually not a component of it. We'll need the, the y direction of that. And we also have momentum coming into the control volume. Rho VQ, rho is water density. Um, v, velocity, Q, flow rate. And then rho VQ for momentum out of the control volume. So now, uh, we'll, just to review again what we know, uh, we know um, flow rate, that's the, sort of the design value that you're given by the client, for instance. The Y1, the slope of the pipe, and water density. And in order to have a hydraulic jump, we know that F1 is going to be greater than 1. So then we can readily compute from geometry area 1, um, uh, fruit number at location 1, we know the angle of the pipe. And so our unknowns are, are everything at location 2, essentially. But once we get Y2, then we can get Y bar 2, we can get area 2. They call the Y bar is the centroid, distance to the centroid. Um, so these, so Y2, A2, V2, they're kind of related. So then uh, this is where I start looking at my watch and I wonder, okay, I gotta get through this thing in 20 minutes. <laughs> I wanna give Debbie her due because she spent like three weeks on this, like six hours a day, and it's uh, and just a lot of time. And I think this is actually useful to the field if you do, if you do, uh, can worry about hydraulic jumps and circular pipes. This, this might actually be pretty useful. Um, so just a review of geometry here. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit fast here. Momentum equation in the in the flow direction. Um, got the hydrostatic forces, the weight due to the control volume, and momentum in and out of the control volume. You can write the hydrostatic forces as those equations. And then just to keep it going here. One of the challenging things with the with the uh, slope pipe is the weight. If you have a horizontal pipe, then there is no weight component in the flow direction, so that term would just drop out. But since we do have a slope pipe, we do have to worry about the weight, and it's a bit challenging because we have to integrate from zero to L over the area, which varies with x, um, and then integrate that over dx, and then take the component in the x direction by uh, w sine b. So then keep it going with the math here. Um, and then uh, just keep going with the math. And Debbie did a lot of substitutions and derivatives, a lot of fun stuff, keep it going. And then um, came up with use some trig double angle formulas. And uh, I was very impressed. I couldn't do this. <laughs> How many of you could do this with math? Oh, we have, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, so so uh, at least some of you are still away here. I appreciate that. So a lot of math here, double angle formulas, and then it turns out that the double angle formulas and this equation here actually reduces down to uh, an equation that can be written in terms of, uh, of um, the centroid and the area A. And then continuing to simplify, you get this equation, which really isn't that simple. And then what it boils down to with these centroids is we still have this length term. So how do you get the length for the hydraulic jump? So uh, we did. We looked through the literature. There are a lot of equations for the length of hydraulic jumps in various geometry channels and also various slopes of channels. We kind of went with the simplest one, a book by Montes in 1998. Um, showed a nice simple equation. Length is 4.5 y2. So if you look at your y2 of saying being 4.5 units, inches, whatever your units are, then 4.5 this way, this drawing's not quite to that kind of scale. But uh, so you'd be 4.5 uh, length for uh, one in the y2. So that gave us a nice sort of simple equation. And we did some experiments later on that I'll show here uh, that actually show that that 4.5 actually is a pretty good number. So then uh, we make the substitution for that length and then just keep going with the math. And we ultimately end up with this. So we have an equation for flow rate as a function of the information at location 1 and the information at location 2. So if you knew your y1, y2, you could get your y bar 1, y bar 2, area 1, area 2, solve for flow rate. But what we really wanted to do was, was knowing the flow rate and the y1 compute the y2. So um, we programmed this up in Excel, uh, wrote a macro that used go used uh, Excel's goal seek functions, so all the area equations that are in the, uh, built into the, the Y bars and the areas we put into Excel. And all the geometry, fruit number. So uh, just like I said, we put it into Excel and uh, we're looking through the literature. I wanted to see how I could present this you know, to, to, uh, to people to use it, <laughs> rather than using Excel, which you can do. Um, but uh, 
So we set it up in graphical form. So most graphs for, uh, for hydraulic jumps plot uh, y1 over d on the y-axis and y2 over d on the x-axis and then have a set of curves for various crude numbers and typically uh, most of them are for slopes of zero. Um, I've got five minutes left. So you have a handout of this. And so um, what, what, our, what the useful thing here is that we've got uh, crude numbers and at different slopes. So as a, for instance, sort of a take home here is if your y1 over d, say, is 0.4 and you've got a crude number of, say, 2, and maybe your slope of your pipe is 10%, so, but if you didn't have our work, you just had graphs for maybe zero, uh, zero slope, you would come over with your, with your graph of zero slope, because that's all you've got. You come down and you say, hey, my y2 over d is going to be 0.8. I'm not going to hit the crown of the pipe. But if you look at our work, you're going to say, uh-oh, maybe I should use the, the slope of 10% graph. If my, uh, if, my, if my slope is 10%, I'm going to be way out here. I'm going to hit the crown of the pipe. Even with 5%, I'm pretty much hitting the crown of the pipe. So the handout you have here will help you uh, come up with the, uh, the y2 over d um, if you're sloped. I have a video here. I think I'm going to skip the video, um, but uh, basically water flowing through here, creating a hydraulic jump. And I want to get to um, um, some results here to compare our uh, predicted with, uh, with measured. So using the same setup, like I said, we work out of our home. So this is just in a garage with pegboard. These poles are at one inch intervals apart. <laughs> so you can kind of, it's kind of helpful a little bit. And uh, so similar situation before with the submersible pump bringing water back through. And so for this situation where we have a flow rate of 480 milliliters per second, uh, we measured the upstream depth and um, computed the fruit number with the flow rate and the slope. Um, got a, so y1 over d was 0.2, went to my charts, actually went to the Excel so I could be more precise about it so I didn't have to interpolate with the chart. Predict 43 millimeters, we measured 44. Ah, that's pretty good. So I just did a whole bunch more experiments. So another one, I predicted 37, measured 30. Well, that's not so great, but it is kind of a pretty rough experiment. So whatever. So uh, another one, I predicted 56, got 60. Uh, so this one's getting, you can see this jump's pretty uh, pretty turbulent there, uh, just because it's a fairly high fruit number to start with. And then uh, another another case, 32 is what we predicted, measure 25, then some higher, then I upped it to 10% slope. And you can kind of see that, you know, remember we used the L of 4.5 times Y2. So if your Y2 is like here, this is where I measured the Y2, and maybe we have about 4.5 times that distance out to here-ish. So you know maybe the 4.5 wasn't too bad of a number to go with for that uh, length equation. So then um, just did some more experiments. Predicted 52, measured 42. You know, if you have a good, nice lab, then you could uh, you know, set up a really nice experiment for this. <laughs> then another one, 42, we measured 40. You know, the water's bouncing around like crazy, so you know we're lucky to be like plus or minus five millimeters, really. I, I do feel like we had a good feel for the flow rate value, a good accurate value of the slope, and a good idea of the and, and an accurate value of the inside diameter. So the y1 and y2 were actually the numbers that are a little inaccurate as far as being able to measure them. So just uh, reviewing your graph that hopefully you picked up and maybe you'll be able to use. Um, you come in, come across with your y1 over d to your slope and your fruit number. Come down, pull off the y2 over d. Uh, what we did uh, might mentioned that we did neglect the friction the friction force. Um, most authors do this. They don't always explain why, but the, essentially the reason is that the other parameters in the equation, such as the momentum change and the hydrostatic forces, are dominant over the, over the friction, what the friction would be. Um, we also neglected air entrainment. Air entrainment can be very important because hydraulic jumps are churning around, so you get a lot of air in there. And so um, the equations are actually going to underpredict what the uh, what the hydro what the secant depth would actually be because you get some air entrainment. You may get air entrainment such that your y2 may be like 20% more, for instance, than predicted. And there's some there's some articles about that um, available. I might mention our references. Here are some standard references that we use, Chow, Chowdhury. Um, our website, um, and a, a master's thesis by Lowe, and the book by Montes. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email, phone, whatever. I, I'm really pumped up about this. I think Debbie did an awesome job with the math. I, 
I feel like this is a really good contribution to the field. If somebody knows that this has already been done, I'd, I'd like to know, but I think we're unique on it. Um, any questions? Yeah, uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, I see that uh, in your calculation, what did you vary? Did you vary like, uh, I see that your internal diameter is only three inch. Yeah, right, that's a good point. Yeah, so we yeah. use, yeah. Did, uh, my question is this one. Did you vary the diameter to see what is happening? No, we use the three inch clear pipe. That's all the experiments we did. But yeah, it would be great to use a whole bunch of different diameters. Yeah, but yes. I think that is, is better. Yeah. Maybe you get the chance to see what is happening. Okay. If you, yeah. Because you know what I'm talking about, that one. If the pipe is too, uh, the diameter is too small, that means that uh, we know that the pressure is uh, is force over area, and then uh, when you vary it, uh, when you vary it that diameter, you can see the hydraulic jump if, right. if the, the if the pipe is too small, and then just just vary it, uh, the diameter of uh, yeah. the pipe, and then you can see what there is. I, I would say that this analysis is is general, so it's valid for like one meter diameter huge pipes. So um, you know, so I, I don't see that it's that it's uh, any valid for small pipes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's another question back there. Uh, it's a good presentation. Uh, there are two different research groups uh, in Delta Aris, Netherlands. In Stuttgart, Germany, they, they have studied the sequence of hydraulic jumps in slope uh, applications for wastewater mains and the concern that they, same concerns about uh, plug flow, slug flow. Uh, so, Ivo Pothoff in Netherlands have been studying this. Uh, Oscar Estrada, now he's in the University of uh, Mexico City. Um, another Another possible way that you can look at that is sub and equation solvers. Uh, for instance, if you apply SWIM-5 and discretize SWIM-5 artificially, you may be able to track locations of hydraulic jumps forming, uh, approaching pipe ground and then coming down. Uh, so numerically, this can be tackled not a steady way, unsteady, with so many equations. But we can talk more about yeah, that. Yeah, it's I'm a topic I'm it interested built, in. I'm not aware of it being built in any models, although you could do it like even in, yeah, in head grasp. It, I, always, I, I would like to know if there's a head grasp for a circle. Can you do head grasp for more than half full? Okay, yeah, just, I, I just wanted to encourage you to, uh, um, to publish the, the Derivation here is it ought, to, it ought to, it really ought to be a, a it could easily be a technical note at Journal Hydraulic Engineering because I was looking for something like this for validating a hydraulic jump in a Saint Benant solver and I was like well there is no so I, I think you're right that no one has done that calculation before so if you could reduce it down and make it into a technical note in Journal Hydraulic Engineering and Journal Hydraulic Research I, I think it would go very good thank you appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm gonna similar. I'm gonna keep us moving along, but um, feel free to ask Ken at the very end of this session. Thank you.